Greetings. I'm Dr. Deepuja Babu. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Material Science and Metallurgical Engineering at IIT Hyderabad. In the coming se semester, I'll be taking a course on porous materials, especially nanoporous materials, where the pore size is below 100 nanometers. What is special about these porous materials? These porous materials, for example, a few gram of these porous material has got the same surface area as that of an entire cricket field. And because of its enormous surface area, they find a wide variety of applications in, for example, in batteries, supercapacitors, gas storage, gas sensing, catalysis, etc. So how do you determine that these materials have such a high surface area? One of the most common ways of measuring the surface area is by using the gas option analyzer. It is from these machines that we obtain using the BET technique, the specific surface area. So what are the best practices for obtaining the BET surface area? What are the common pitfalls involved in the BET surface area determination? How can you, how can you improve the results? How can you get better results using BET adsorption measurements? But BET is only the tip of the iceberg. What are the other characterization techniques that are available? In this course, we will look into the different porous materials. We will look we will first look how the porous materials are classified. What is the basis for their classification? What is the mechanism of gas adsorption in these porous materials? We will also look into different kinds of porous materials like actuated carbon, metal organic framework, zeolites, MCM. Also, we will look into covalent organic frameworks, different kinds of, uh, different kinds of nanoporous materials, how these are synthesized and what are their typical characteristics. In the later part of the course, we will also look into what kind of other characterization techniques can be employed. For example, nitrogen adsorption at 77 Kelvin, CO2 adsorption at 0 Kelvin. We will also look into X-ray diffraction techniques and a bit of microscopy. Towards the end of this course, we will look into very specific applications like gas separation, carbon capture, energy applications like how these porous materials can be used in batteries, for example. Thank you.